I am here in the Dumbo neighborhood of Brooklyn at the offices of The Atavist, which publishes long-form content digitally and is also a platform for other publishers to run the same kind of content. And we're going to talk to the founders of The Atavist and also to one of the companies they work with, Blank on Blank, about why they're built in Brooklyn. So Atavist is both a publishing company and a software company. You know, sometimes we think of it overall as a storytelling company. We tell our own stories in the form of long-form non-fiction pieces. We also produce a software platform called Creativist, which lets other people tell stories digitally through apps, through the web, through eBooks. The idea came about in 2009. There are three founders, myself and Jefferson Rabb, who's our CTO, and Nicholas Thompson. Well, we were just sort of interested in seeing what, uh, what could be done with long content uh, reading on digital devices or on the web if you thought about digital first. That was really where it started. And the three of us just got together and started talking about the way that certain types of stories were being told in the digital world and how there wasn't a lot of room for things that were longer than magazine stories and shorter than books. I was working as a freelance writer for magazines, Wired for a long time and for The New Yorker. And then Nicholas was an editor, he was my editor at Wired, so that's how we kind of knew each other. And then Jefferson was working as a web designer in the publishing industry. Either working on websites for authors or websites for publishers. So I was very much in, in the head of thinking about reading online even before making these guys. We were all kind of touching on different aspects of what this became. When we started, it was, it was a little bit more like a project, you know, it was sort of like a side project that evolved into being a company. We sort of had the luxury of having the, the primary client be the activist and be under the same roof so that we had a uh, near constant feedback loop where we could refine things based on a real world use. It seemed preferable to a scenario where you're building software in a vacuum for an unknown client. We also work with higher-end media companies and publishers, so someplace like the Weather Channel, which has started producing their own long, sometimes investigative pieces that are full of video and images. Blank on Blank is a digital series I produced. We find uh, lost interviews with cultural icons, audio interviews that people haven't heard before, and we turn them into animated shorts uh, with PBS Digital Studios. The most popular has been an episode with Kurt Cobain. It was great to do because the journalist, you know, he recorded the interview when he wrote the story and then stashed away the tape and never thought about it again. I got hooked up with these guys, I don't know, a number of months ago and I thought it was a really smart and different kind of platform for us and we have a site that's built on WordPress and you know it works well but it's kind of been pushed to the max and to be able to peel all that away and just do something kind of smart and clean. One really cool feature that we've been using is where you can take a video and just have it loop so it's kind of like an extended more beautiful gif. In Creativist you can embed the video and then you can kind of provide the transcript. You can provide all of this sort of ancillary material and design that makes up a whole kind of package for that story. When you guys decided to get an office, did you know right away that you wanted to stay in Brooklyn? Yeah, we, uh, we actually picked the location. Our original office was actually just precisely two, two floors below where we are right now. So there's a thing called green space that has sort of like subdivided offices. You can kind of rent them and they already have furniture in them. And so we kind of dropped into that and had a few desks. Uh, and it was an easy way to have some place to gather. It has gotten a little crazy in Dumbo. It's, I mean, even from 2011, when you know I would walk a lot of days, but I would take the subway. The difference between that and now, if you take the subway, the mass of people that exit at York Street or at the street and are filing out into various new companies in Dumbo is actually somewhat similar to I was in. San Francisco in like 98, 99, and it sort of reminds me of that. When I first moved to New York, it was desolate. It was a great neighborhood, but it was desolate. There was very little business, and now it's kind of overrun. What's your favorite spot in Brooklyn? Favorite spot in Brooklyn? Well, I guess if you mean favorite overall spot, it's probably Brooklyn Bridge Park. Incredible view of Manhattan from where we are, and it's really nice. Favorite indoor spot would definitely be the Henry Street Ale House, where many if not all of these significant decisions related to this company by the founders have probably been made. And there is a sort of feeling of 
people striking out on their own and kind of creating their own, uh, whether it's, you know, this sort of extreme end of what people talk about are kind of like artisanal pickles and everything else. But at the same time, you know, the idea that in our case that you can publish a magazine that can, you know, compete against other magazines at the National Magazine Awards and you can do it with a few people uh, out of your apartment originally is that's what's exciting to us and that's kind of like what our software is also for. It's sort of enabling people to do their own publishing without having to go to the giant institutions that were typically required to get a big platform.